In much of the world, every time a vehicle is refueled, volatile organic compounds, or VOCs, enter the atmosphere and photochemically react to form ozone and PM2.5. Since these emissions pose a threat to human health and are costly, some nations and metropolitan areas have elected to add stage two vapor recovery systems to their gasoline dispensing facilities. Reliance on certification data and an absence of in-use testing has led to the belief that 90 to 95 percent of refueling emissions are captured by the system. However, scientific examination of the process proves the actual percentage is significantly lower and that the Stage 2 system will never be able to achieve certification level performance in real-world applications. The intent of this video is not to discourage the continued use of Stage 2 systems. Stage 2 is performing a valuable interim role. Our goal is to illustrate the complexity of these systems and clearly demonstrate how a host of variables, both natural and man-made, make it impossible for Stage 2 to meet certification levels in everyday use. This is a gasoline dispensing facility, or GDF. The components are rather simple. Fuel dispensers are connected by fuel lines to gasoline storage tanks below ground. When a car is refueled, the fuel dispenser activates a pump, sending gasoline out of the storage tank, through a flow meter in the dispenser, and into the fuel tank of the vehicle. As the vehicle tank fills, a mixture of air and gasoline vapor in the tank headspace is forced out of the filler neck. This image, shot with an infrared camera, shows vapor escaping from a vehicle tank during uncontrolled refueling. For every 50 liters pumped, 75 grams of harmful VOC emissions escape into the atmosphere. Here's how a Stage 2 system is integrated into a GDF. The dispensing units are replaced with new units containing Stage 2 vacuum pumps and piping. The GDF site is excavated and Stage 2 vapor return piping is installed. The conventional dispensing nozzle is replaced with a complex and costly nozzle that is intended to draw vapors in as they escape the vehicle. There are many different types of Stage 2 nozzles, but they all operate on the same principle and achieve similar results. Here is how the Stage 2 system operates. The vapor mixture being forced out of the vehicle tank is collected by the nozzle, drawn by a vacuum pump in the dispenser unit and pumped back into the underground storage tank, or UST. The volume of vapor collected is set manually and is based on how the system is calibrated. For example, if the fuel dispenser is set to deliver 38 liters of gasoline per minute, the stage two pump can be set to draw in 38 liters per minute of the vapor mixture. In other words, a one-to-one -one ratio. However, the use of a fixed ratio is based on the incorrect assumption that an equal volume of vapor mixture is generated. Here's why this assumption is incorrect. Gasoline is a volatile substance. Volatility is a measure of the tendency of a substance to vaporize. As temperature increases, vaporization increases, and alternately, a decrease in temperature reverses the process. That's why a storage tank filled with gasoline can have a gasoline vapor concentration of 35% at 22 degrees Celsius and 59% at 36 degrees. And there are other factors that can affect volatility. Many gasolines now contain ethanol. If two containers of gasoline with 10% ethanol content are mixed, the vapor pressure of the gasoline remains unchanged. However, if you mix gasoline with a 10% ethanol content with a gasoline that contains no ethanol, the vapor pressure increases up to 15%. And the same situation can occur when you refuel a car. The volatility of gasoline can also be seasonal, with differences in the RVP, or read vapor pressure, of a fuel. Winter grade gasoline may have a more volatile chemical makeup than a summer grade gasoline. 
In the summer, governments often require fuel with a lower RVP to prevent excessive evaporative emissions caused by high temperatures. But why does this matter? And why should you care? These variations in temperature, ethanol content and seasonal RVP have a significant impact on the in-use performance of a Stage 2 vapour recovery system. To understand why, we'll need to better understand how changing volatility affects the volume of vapour that vents from the vehicle during refuelling. If, like before, we have a dispenser set and calibrated to deliver 38 litres of gasoline per minute, and we have a Stage 2 pump set and calibrated to draw in 38 litres per minute, and the RVP of the two fuels is the same, and the temperature of the storage tank perfectly matches the temperature of the vehicle gasoline tank, and the ethanol content of the gasoline in the storage tank perfectly matches the ethanol content of the gasoline in the vehicle tank, then the Stage 2 system can work fairly well. In fact, these are the very controlled conditions used during certification tests of Stage 2 systems, resulting in 90 to 95% recovery efficiencies. However, in real-life situations, the temperatures are rarely, if ever, close, and the results are far less remarkable. If the underground storage tank is 25 degrees Celsius and the vehicle tank is 10 degrees Celsius, then the vapour concentration in the UST is higher than the vapour concentration in the vehicle tank. As gasoline enters the vehicle tank, equilibrium conditions change. The gasoline temperature in the vehicle tank rises and gasoline vaporizes to maintain equilibrium as warm gasoline enters the vehicle. The newly created volume of vapor is then pushed out of the filler neck along with the original vapor mixture content of the tank. In this scenario, for every liter of gasoline that enters the tank, an average of 1.3 liters of air and vapor are pushed out. If the Stage 2 vacuum pump is set to draw in 1 litre per litre of gasoline dispensed, the surplus vapour mixture, 0.3 litres per litre, escapes into the atmosphere. If 10 litres of gas are dispensed, 3 litres of gasoline vapour escapes. In this scenario, the best efficiency that Stage 2 could provide is only 75%. If we reverse the general conditions, if the UST is 22 degrees Celsius and the vehicle tank is 36 degrees Celsius, the gasoline entering the tank quickly cools the gasoline in the vehicle tank, and a portion of the vapour in the tank headspace condenses back into the liquid. The tank re-establishes equilibrium. In this instance, for every litre of gasoline that enters the tank, on average, a little over a half litre exits. Since the Stage 2 pump is set to collect one litre of the vapour mixture per litre of gas dispensed, the Stage 2 nozzle is able to collect all of the emissions that escape the vehicle. On the surface, this seems like a good thing. Up to 100% of the vapour is being collected at the vehicle. However, if we continue to examine the process, we see that since the vapour recovery pump is set to collect one litre, it must draw in almost a half litre of fresh air to make up the difference. When the fresh air mixes with the vapour mixture emitted from the vehicle, the vapour concentration is diluted below the equilibrium concentration and vapour pressure in the UST. In response, gasoline in the UST vaporises until equilibrium is re-established. The newly created vapour increases the pressure in the tank and excess air and vapours are pushed out of the vent pipe, a total of about 9 litres. The benefit of collecting emissions at the vehicle is offset by the release of emissions further down the line. Some countries have mandated that Stage 2 vacuum pumps be set to collect between 1 and 1.2 litres of vapour mixture for every litre of gasoline dispensed. The intent is to ensure the collection of all emissions exiting the vehicle. Let's examine how a 1.2 Stage 2 vacuum pump setting affects the system. If we revisit the first scenario with matching temperatures in both the underground storage tank and the vehicle tank, we see 38 litres enter the vehicle tank and 38 litres of vapour vent out the filler neck. The Stage 2 pump 
is set to collect 1.2 litres for every litre dispensed. So it over collects almost 8 litres of fresh air. The 8 litres of fresh air causes another 4 litres of evaporation in the UST, leading to 12 litres of fugitive emissions at the vent pipe and a best achievable overall stage 2 efficiency of only 70%. Another example of why a measurement of stage 2 efficiency must include the vehicle and the UST vent. Now imagine, beyond overcollection and temperature, how mixing different gasolines with variations in volatility can further complicate the process. The variables, and likewise the possibilities, are endless. These variables also make it extremely challenging to test in-use stage 2 efficiencies at a GDF. Conditions can change daily or even with every vehicle. And it is this lack of in-use testing that has led to the general acceptance of the certification values. Values measured under conditions that will, most likely, never occur naturally. In fact, in real-world applications, the US EPA estimates the best average efficiency a Stage 2 system can achieve is 70%. And this percentage can only be achieved if every GDF has a fully functioning and properly maintained Stage 2 system installed. What can and does go wrong with Stage 2 systems dramatically impacts their effectiveness. Sleeves fall off and tear. Vapor recovery lines develop leaks or become clogged from wear or improper installation. Pumps fall out of calibration or break. Flow meters drift out of alignment. The list of potential maintenance problems is long and costly. The result? GDFs that never even come close to capturing 50% of refueling emissions. And in some cases, they fail to function at all. Without strict government oversight and personal commitment by the station operator, it is impossible to know how many Stage 2 systems are actually functioning properly in use. However, even with its shortcomings, Stage 2 implementation is a strategic move by nations that desire an immediate reduction in refueling emissions. The next logical step in the progression of improvements is the integration of a control system that can capture nearly 100% of emissions at the vehicle without ever producing vent pipe emissions. This system is called ORVR, or Onboard Refueling Vapor Recovery. Simple, low-cost modifications are made to the design of new vehicles. When these vehicles refuel, the emissions are captured and later recycled within the vehicle. Variations in temperature or the volatility of a gasoline have no impact on performance. And once installed, the ORVR system never needs maintenance.